Let's bring in Utah Senator Mike Lee. He's also the ranking member on the Joint Economic Committee. I want to get to this breaking news about the pipeline, the cyber hack uh, attack, and the shortages, or not the shortages, but the distribution problems that are now causing additional economic problems for people in the southeast and maybe beyond. Senator? Good morning. Uh, yeah, it's good to be with you. We face enormous challenges right now as we're dealing with a shortage created by a cyber attack, a shortage that's exacerbated because of regulatory inadequacies that have resulted in uh, our inability to construct new oil refineries. And uh, this also comes at a time when due to government involvement, excessive government spending, or causing prices to hike on, on everything from gasoline to milk uh, to everything else people buy. So th this is a very difficult time for the American people, particularly those who live in the region most directly affected. But these are going to get worse unless or until we figure out ways to make the federal government restrain itself so that it's no longer harming people and causing prices needlessly to spike. Well, sir, there's a few things I want to run by you through. Uh, we just heard from Jennifer Granholm, who's in the briefing room yesterday. Uh, clip number three, guys, talking about pipelines. Best way to go. Here's what you said. Watch. What is the feasibility of using rail cars to transport fuel into the affected areas? I know that's being looked at. Yeah, um, the DOT is looking at that. And the pipe is the best way to go. And so that's why. Um, Hopefully, this company, uh, Colonial, will, in fact, uh, be able to restore mm -hmm. operations by the end of the week, as they have said. So she says the pipe is the best way to go. Keep in mind the first act that the president made in January was to cancel right. the Keystone Pipeline coming out of Canada in the Midwest. I want to couple that with what Jen Psaki said about, you know, a lot of you have been blaming this $300 unemployment check for the reason why people are not filling the jobs across America. She said this from the podium as well yesterday. We've seen the explanations uh, that have been uh, put out there by some leaders in states and some leaders even in Washington. Uh, and they have blamed uh, $300 checks. There are still people who need assistance and we're not seeing this as a root cause or a major factor in people not seeking work. Okay, so you've got the pipelines, the best, the pipes, the best way to go. They have blamed a $300 check. Your response on both of those charges. Yeah, it, look, this um, really illustrates the problem. It was utterly irresponsible to cancel the Keystone XL pipeline. Uh, and she's made that clear now by saying the pipeline is the best way to go. We now find ourselves with fewer options uh, than we should have. So, so yeah, it, it, their decision to cancel this pipeline, uh, coming on the heels of President Biden's decision, to issue a moratorium unilaterally on all oil and gas drilling on federal lands where we have a lot of our oil and gas resources in this country. Uh, coupled with the fact that we've got needlessly onerous regulatory restrictions that have been forced on the construction of new refineries. Uh, this is a, a perfect storm, a trifecta of sorts that stops the American people from gaining access to the things that they need to live their day-to-day -day lives. It's causing prices to spike, and it's a deep concern. Yesterday, I just want to touch on this one other topic, is yesterday uh, the Senate uh, held a hearing, and it was about SR1. This is about the Democrats' proposal to really change voting in America. Um, you had both McConnell and Schumer there yesterday, which shows it was very high stakes. Where does that go now? Will it get a vote? <sighs> It, it may come up for a vote. It cannot pass uh, uh, under the rules of the Senate because there are nowhere near the 60 votes necessary to bring debate to a close. It takes a simple majority to pass, but you've got to bring debate to a close first. They don't have the votes to do that. So we've got to make sure that that doesn't happen and that they don't nuke the filibuster or break the rules of the Senate in order to pass this. If they did, the results would be catastrophic. This bill would turn the Democratic Party into a sort of revolutionary institutional party. It would control American politics for decades and would do so in a way that would clamp down on political free speech uh, it, to such a degree that it would almost rival uh, the Alien and Sedition Acts in terms of the tyranny it imposes on the American people. This thing cannot pass. It must not pass. This bill is, is ultimately not about increasing uh, legal votes. It's, it's about increasing illegal votes. That's why I sometimes refer to H.R. 1 and S. 1 as the Illegal Voting Act.
Senator. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for your time, Appreciate Senator. It. Mike Lee from Utah, thank you very much. You're